Hello, welcome to Clarity Design. Um, today I'm just going to uh, show you the uh, tracks editor um, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of animation uh, using uh, different clips. Um, I'm just going to set up very quickly a little uh, bouncing ball so that we can use that as a clip of animation um, and then we can start having a look at uh, this. So <coughs> I won't do any uh, anything advanced with it, just um, keyframe that in the middle. So it'll be a pretty boring piece of animation, but there you go. Okay, so I've got a bouncing ball, very simple, over 24 frames. I'm going to add some more frames. I've already set this scene up so that um, it's playing real time. If you want to do that, you go inside the options and you've got this playback speed down here. Um, click save and it will change that for you. So I've got 24 frames, uh, animation, very simple, uh, nothing exciting there at all. If I wanted to play around with that, make it a bit more realistic, I could go into the um, animation curve and play around with the curve. Um, uh, you'll recognize these again in a minute or two. So if you've used the animation curve before um, or the animation graph before, then you'll uh, get used to some of these things popping up again. Um, going back to full view, um, I'm ready to start uh, turning this into a clip. So I've got 200 frames in here. I'd like to repeat it a couple of times, but not for the whole time. In the um, graph editor, you can um, bake out keyframes and get things to repeat for infinity. But what happens if you just want uh, a particular action happening a number of times with a character? Um, and uh, maybe it's at a later time. So um, the tracks editor allows you to start doing that. Now to get to the tracks editor, if you go to window animation, editors and tracks editor is just up here um, and when you first open it up it's empty and you'll see that you've got your view options here and if you hover over them it tells you what they do um, it allows you to see the playback range or to see a clip at the moment we don't have a clip in here normally you would rig your character up and once you've rigged your character then you'd turn it into a uh, character set um, and this will allow uh, the uh, access quicker access to the uh, keyable channels that you've got set up on that character um, and then you'd use that character set uh, you'd have that character set selected when you started making these selections um, but for this simple um, tutorial we'll just have a look at how we can do this with simple objects uh, and uh, characters that aren't very complex so if I press shift and I uh, click on the timeline it'll go red and I can highlight the area that I want to um, turn into a clip and then I can go to my uh, tracks editor and inside the tracks editor I can just create click create new clip so there it is my 24 frame clip here um, and the animation hasn't changed so it's still from 1 to 24 I'm on frame 24 at the moment I can slide backwards and forwards so nothing has changed apart from the fact that the little red ticks that were in the timeline for the character so peace sphere is now peace sphere character so this piece for character has now contains this clip now contains or this node now contains the animation uh, ticks. Um, so uh, you can see here soundtrack. This allows us to uh, insert uh, import audio so that we could work things to audio timing if we wanted to. Um, just a little bit about what we can do here. We can uh, cut down clips just by clicking on the um, uh, uh, clip, or we could expand them to take longer. So you'll see now that over that that same clip over a longer period of time uh, and so it just takes longer to do it so this is quite nice um, and again uh, how quickly it starts and the frame it's starting on there so um, just by hovering and left clicking over you can change those things just to, let's just stick that back to about 24 okay so I've got my original clip here um, and I can copy and paste it uh, look what happens Let's just uh, change the size and shape of this a little bit. Um, and look what happens at the moment. And then I'm just going to select that and press Control C, Control V, and I've generated a new clip on a new layer. So here we go. Okay, so you can see there that what it's doing is it's timesing the animation by two. So uh, this clip plus this clip is equaling the now new height. Um, so that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is put it next to it. And if you put it next to it, it obviously just repeats. But I could repeat it and slow it down.
So it gives me lots of options um, with how I want to use clips and uh, little bits of animation more than once. Now on this, if I have it on a separate track, I can actually select the two clips and I can use this option here, which allows me to blend the two together. So what it's going to do is it's going to blend between uh, this clip of animation, this clip of animation. So we should get a uh, smoother transition between the two. Um, so it's doing its best to blend between the two there. Um, and it might be at this point, let's just stop that running. Um, it might be at this point that you want to start having a look at animation curves um, to play around with those and to get them set correctly. Um, so there's your uh, graph editor, which will pop open for you. If you have that loaded, and you can see what's happening here um, and you can frame up um, your animations. You can also uh, cut clips and uh, move them about uh, up, up here. So uh, the tracks editor is quite a powerful little tool to help you get animation happening a bit faster than uh, repeating keyframes um, and a keyframe process for uh, something like a walk cycle uh, or even if you're doing the chorus of a song which was a repeating chorus you could actually just take that whole section and uh, repeat it. So the tracks editor could save you uh, quite a lot of time. Yeah.